God, here we are to say that you are our God. And God, the only way we could have said that was for you to take the initiative. The only way that we can even be in this place today and, and say you're my God is because of Christ. God, the only way I can stand in front of these people today is because at 15 years old in a place called Falls Creek, you have welcomed me to the gospel. I am so thankful for when I was 15. And I'm thanking you at 42 that you only get better each year. Father, we love you. We worship you. We praise you. God, do what you want to do. Do what you're best at. Speak to your kids. And all of God's kids said together, Amen. Amen. I am not Johnny Cash. <laughs> I can sing Ring of Fire, and don't make me break that one out. My name is Kevin Lawfer. Everybody calls me Rev Kev. Say that with me. Rev Kev. That's so I know that I'm a reverend because sometimes it's hard to tell with me. All right? I have had an amazing time this weekend. Uh, I was telling, uh, telling my, my kids here. That's Zach, Rebecca, Eric, and Charlie Ann. I was telling my kids here that I probably needed this more than they did. By the way, I just these two sections, I want you to turn and look at this section. Um, do I need to say anything else? Yeah, I think y'all need to be giving it up, okay? All right, that's right. Now, testing. Brethren, we are, okay, I'm just checking it. All right. So my name's Rev Kev. I grew up in a first Baptist church. Anybody ever heard of a little place called Hobart, Oklahoma? Really? I'm going to cry. All right. <laughs> Blessings. Hobart is, uh, is about, you know, 4,000 people, and it looks pretty much like this. I was telling the youth it looks like this. From my house, I can see the curvature of the earth. That is Hobart, Oklahoma. I grew up in a First Baptist church, and, and Brother Dennis, in a First Baptist church, I learned lots of things. I learned, one thing I learned, to be honest with you, at First Baptist church was I learned that pastors can be boring. Thank goodness Pastor Dennis is not that way. Amen? Amen. Thank you. He's insecure, okay, so be sure and say that a lot, all right? So we love, and I actually got to hear you a couple of months ago, and I, I thought, man, he was great. I could live, my own pastor, he and I grew up together at Hobart, Oklahoma. How scary is that to grow up in Hobart, Oklahoma, ended up in the Tulsa metro area together? That is, the, the Hobart Democrat chief even wrote about it. We made the paper. Of course, it goes out, you know, bi-monthly. But anyway, so we made the paper. And so my pastor, sometimes I just be real honest with him, and I'll sit kind of off on this side, and I'll say, Pastor, man, you had it today. Man, you had it going on. Other days, I just go like this. And, you know, and I can do that because, you know, he and I have a relationship. But now he starts watching me to make sure I don't go to sleep. So if you go to sleep, I will just yell in the microphone, and the kids know I can do that quite well. I can yell pretty loud. But I grew up in First Baptist Church, and I learned something. I learned a lot of things. I learned that sometimes religion can be dead. Yeah, actually, thank you all the time. But I did learn something. I learned something at 15 years old. That a relationship is what it's all about. Here's what I learned. Listen to me. 2,000 years ago, they crucified our Lord. 2,000 years ago, they hung him on a tree and they laughed at him while he died for them. Died for us. 2,000 years ago... He was like a sponge and absorbed our sins and took our penalty upon himself. He who knew no sin became sin for us. Good news? See, I'm just thinking you don't think so. Now, I don't know how we do it here, 
But how we do it in good old Owasso America is, you like something, you say it, because it makes us go faster. <laughs> and the more you don't say anything, we don't think you get it, so we start going like this. Good news? Yeah. We won't be punished for our sins. He took the whooping for us. Second thing, because Jesus, because of our Savior, God forgets that we ever sin. I have a friend of mine, and he says this all the time. I've heard him say it if once. I've heard him say it a hundred times. I'm sure glad God has a bad memory. Amen? Amen. Oh, some of you are, you are acting self-righteous. Let me just get a projector up of your life, and I'll play it for everybody. And you're like, amen, thank you, God, that you're going to have a bad memory someday. He doesn't, for, he doesn't remember. He throws our sins as far as the east is from the west. That's in a straight line. He remembers them no more. He doesn't have a bad memory. He just loves us. Good news? Jesus imputes his righteousness. Guys, we talked about this last night. He imputes his righteousness upon us at the moment of salvation. That's a good old-fashioned Oklahoma Baptist University word. Not only does he take our sins, not only does he take them upon us, he gives us himself. The good deeds of Christ are upon us. So when God looks at us, he doesn't see us. When God looks at Ravkev, Man, praise the Lord, Dennis. He doesn't see Rev Cab. Amen. Yeah, the kids are like, Amen. Hallelujah. He doesn't see Rev Cab. All right. Praise the Lord when God looks at me. He sees the works of Christ. Remember, guys? The works of Christ. The good things that God did. Good news? Okay, I don't mean to be nasty. I'm going to say this a lot. I want my children, my three adorable, lovely, drama filled girls, I want them standing on this side. Hannah, Molly, Kara. I want on this side my lovely wife, Kendra, five foot two Irish redheaded woman. Pray for me, brethren. <laughs> I receive it in Jesus' name. I want them there with me when Jesus opens the books. I want them there when God the Father looks at Rev Kev and he goes, That's my boy. Because I'm going to look at them and go, I told you. Some of y'all on the way to the cafeteria, you'll get that, okay? He imputes his righteousness on us. When God the Father looks at us, he sees Christ. Good news? I told the kids this all weekend. Here's how I talk to people that say they don't believe in Christ. They'll come to me, I don't believe that. And that's just all, how can an intelligent man believe such things? Here's what I say. Number one, I go, I'm not intelligent. And they go, well, we know. I say this, if I'm wrong... I've lived a life of peace in the midst of some of the roughest circumstances. If I'm wrong, I fought for a cause higher than myself. You get me? If I'm wrong, I lived a good life. If they're wrong, they go to hell. Y'all have to warm up because it gets worse from here, okay? So <laughs> it just, <laughs> Holy Spirit, come now. And I'm right, baby. I'll tell you, I'm right. Good news. But I have to say this. Here's where you got to love me because I'm your brother. So what? Big deal. I'm going to throw this in for the youth. whoop de doo <laughs> What good is it if it's not active and alive amongst the brethren? What good is it, okay, clean it up for you, Pastor, to sit on our blessed assurance, <laughs> sucking up the goodness of God, and I'll pick on myself, and becoming fat, with the goodness of God and never outflowing into a lost and dying world. 